Hello and welcome to Automate Now. This is Marco Cruz. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform drag and drop operations using Selenium WebDriver. Here we are on AutomateNow.io website. In the sandbox page, we're going to find a map at the bottom of the page. And what we're going to be doing today is dragging on this map. Notice that by default, when this page loads, this map pinner is pointing at the center of the map. If you wanted to move this map around, we would click and hold the left mouse button as such, and then we would drag around. When we let go of the mouse button, the map is relocated. So let's see how we can do that with Selenium. First, we're going to need to find a locator for this map. So let's right click on this element and inspect it. And notice that we don't have an ID that we can go by. So perhaps we're going to use the tag name, which is canvas. Let's go to the code. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a method in this base page class. This method name is going to be called drag and drop by offset. And this is going to require the locator for the element that we wish to interact with. We're also going to need an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And here we're going to create an instance of the actions class. And we say actions. And notice that this is part of the interactions package within Selenium. We're just going to call this actions. And then we're going to say new actions. And this requires that we pass in the driver. So we're going to say driver here. So as the name implies, this action class allows us to perform different interactions on the website, as we're going to see shortly. Next, we're going to need to have the web element that we're going to be interacting with. And we're going to say web element. We're going to call this element equal to driver dot find element. And we'll pass in the locator. Next, we're going to say actions dot. And notice all the things that we can do with this actions class. We can drag and drop. We can click click and hold, context click, which is the same as right clicking, double click, and much more. The one we're going to be using is this one, drag and drop by. And this requires that we pass in a web element, followed by an X offset and a Y offset. These last two correspond to the X and Y coordinates that we wish to move the element by. So here we're simply going to say element, comma X, comma Y. And the last thing we need to do here is say dot perform. And this perform methods executes our actions. Nothing is going to take place unless you call this method. And now that we have this method, let's go ahead and create our test. And now I'm in the sandbox test class. And here I'm going to declare two integer variables, one for the X coordinate and one for the Y coordinate. Next, I'm going to call a method from the sandbox page class that we're going to be implementing. And we're going to say sandbox page dot drag map. And here we're going to pass the X and Y coordinates. Now let's go ahead and implement this method. And from here, we can call the method that we created in the base page class. That method is drag and drop by offset. And since we need to pass a by locator, let's go ahead and add it to this class. We're going to scroll to the top and add it here. This time I'm going to be using the tag name as we talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and select it now. And we said that the tag name was canvas. Now we're all set. Now we can finish this method call and say map comma. And now we need to pass the X coordinate. So we say X and the Y coordinate and we say Y. I see that we have an error here. So let me change this to X. Now we're good to go. Now let's go back to our test and see what our test is going to do. So here we're saying that we want to move in the X direction 300 pixels and that we want to move in the y direction 100 pixels. When we call this method drag map, it goes to this method, which is inside of the sandbox page page object. And here we call in this other method that we created earlier in the base page class. If we go here, we can see that the main method that we're using here is drag and drop by. Let's see what this method really does. I'm going to hit control on the keyboard and click on this method name. And here we see the definition of this method, which says a convenience method that performs click and hold at the location of the source element, moves by a given offset, and then releases the mouse. So what that method is going to do is to find this element where the map is located. Then it's going to click at the center of the element, and it will move in whatever direction we specify. If we say X, this is the X coordinate, going left and right. And when we pass a positive value to the X coordinate, we're going to be moving to the right. The Y coordinate goes up and down. And when we pass a positive value, it's going to move down. So we should expect this map to move somewhere in this general direction here. 
Let's go ahead and see what happens. So that we can see what is happening, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. Now I'm going to run this test in debug mode. All right, so we hit the breakpoint. Let's go see the website. And here we see that the map pinner is still pointing at the center of the map. Now let's go back to the test and execute this command. Now that the drag and drop operation is complete, we can go back to the website and notice that the map pinner has moved from the center in the direction that we expected, which was bottom right. Can you guess what we would need to do in order to move the map pinner to the bottom left? In that case, we would simply need to change this number here to a negative number. So I'm going to say negative 300. And when this executes, I should expect this pinner to move in this general direction here. Let's go ahead and rerun our test. And here we see what it looks like before the operation is performed. And now we can see what it looks like after. And this is doing precisely what we wanted to do. In the interest of not adding too much complexity to this test, we're not going to be performing any assertions today. In the future video, we can discuss how we can make sure that the map is displaying correctly after we perform the drag and drop operation. Now that you know about this action class, try playing around with some of the methods that it provides. And remember that if you don't know what any of these methods does, you can always look at the definition of the method by holding the control key on the keyboard and clicking on the method name. And this will give you more information on that method. The actions class in Selenium will prove to be a very useful tool in your automation career. I hope you had fun today taking a sneak peek at it. See you in the next video.